Hi there, I'm Pastor Dean Padayhag. Wait, 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 wait. And I'm Shadea. And I'm Shadea. Welcome, Welcome to Soul Food. Food. We are still continuing with our series on the eternal security and today we will be talking about argument number three. It is argued that there are certain scriptures that seem to disprove the doctrine of eternal security. Now before continuing with this argument, I would like to emphasize first of all that the Bible is the truth. And it is in perfect harmony without contradiction and without error. But it can be very confusing when we mix up and misinterpret or misplace the truth in the Word of God. A misplaced truth will become a lie. For example, if I tell you that today for you to be saved, you have to believe in God and build an ark, Am I right or wrong? Well, of course, I am wrong because even though it's in the Bible, but that's not the way to be saved in the time of grace. It is biblical, but it is not dispensational. If I insist to preach, uh, preach that truth in this time of grace, I will be making that truth that belongs to the past a lie in this present time. Salvation in this time is not by faith and then building an ark, but by faith in the finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ on the cross. Now, we are commanded to study the entire Bible. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 16 to 17, it says, All scripture is given by inspiration of God, and it is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be uh, complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. This verse is telling us that we have to study all scripture. What to study? The entire scripture, the word of God. The apostle Paul, however, gives us the key as to how to study the Bible. In 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15, he says, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. So, we are going to study the entire Bible. That's what to study. And how to study in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15, it says, we have to rightly divide the word of truth. What does rightly dividing mean? The Greek word of it means to cut straight. But the practical meaning of that phrase, rightly dividing the word of truth, uh, it simply means to put the truth into its particular, particular dispensation or what program it belongs. And then put the truth into particular time. When is it supposed to be applied? And then we have to put the truth into particular people to whom it was given. And then we'll put the truth into a particular purpose. What is, uh, what is it uh, for us to obey or to learn from? I mean, all of these things are just practical understanding of how to rightly divide the word of truth. This concept is very important in the interpretation of these verses that seemingly in contradiction with the verses about eternal security. It is very important, as I mentioned, that the Bible is in perfect harmony. There is no contradiction, but it is us. If we do not rightly divide the word of truth, then there will be a contradiction. But the Bible is in perfect harmony. Many people misuse, misplace, and misinterpret 
various verses in the scriptures resulting to confusion and faulty interpretations of the word of God. And we will try to avoid that as we talk about eternal security. This is the core problem of this argument number three. They argue that certain scriptures are seem to disprove the doctrine of eternal security. And we know that that's not true. And uh, we have to talk about that. But upon examining these verses that are seemingly contradicting to the verses that are proving there is a eternal security, they are actually uh, falling into various categories. Number one, they are referring to other dispensations. Those verses, they are not for us, they are for other dispensations. And then, number two, they are referring to the unbelievers, not to the believers, not to the saints, to the saved, but to the unbelievers. And then number three, they are referring to Christian service or rewards, and they have nothing to do with our salvation or losing our salvation. Number four, they are not referring to soul's salvation the salvation of our soul. And so, we have to look at these verses into different categories and put these verses according to their place, to their time, and to the people that are supposed to apply and obey these scriptures that are in the Bible. Well, I would like to continue this particular argument or topic tomorrow because we are running out of time. We will continue this series tomorrow on argument number three. Thank you very much for watching. Enjoy your soul food.